So fire walk with me is vital. It's, it's vital to, if not understanding what Lynch and Frost are showing us, at least contextualising it. It's, it's as vital as watching the first two seasons of the show. Will this be vital? We're going to be losing our full minds trying to interpret the, the, the giant's new prophecy. Remember 430, Richard and Linda, two birds with one stone. People who've seen the first two episodes say that there's, there's, there's no humour. Now oh, the humour's gone. Are you joking? <laughs> uh, when the giant speaks this sphinx-like riddle and Cooper says, I understand. <laughs> That's fucking hilarious. The scenes with Coop and Laura in, in the Red Room mirroring, and there's a ton of mirroring, dark twinning, uh, dark other other cells, otherness going on all the way throughout this, more so than we've ever seen before in any iteration of Twin Peaks. But their scenes mirroring, and we, we've, we've known from series one that Dale will tell us what Laura whispered to him. We will find that out, I'm convinced, but his reaction worries me. Can I talk for a second about Matthew Lillard? Matthew Lillard. Holy shit. Now we all, we all love Matthew Lillard, right? We love, but in our heads, he's, he's scream, he's shaggy. This was, this was next level shit. This, this is career reviving performance. More Matthew Lillard to come. Please, please, Frost and Lynch. We need more of that. Especially when in episode two, he says that he wasn't in the room with the murder, but he had a dream that he was there. And the penny starts to drop for us and we can start to see a context for his situation that he's completely unaware of. I believe he's another one of Bob's puppets, another suit that Bob wears. I believe he's done these horrible things. Or rather, Bob has. Certainly, the plan here, the crime scene, setting up the husband, then killing the wife to make it look like the lawyer did it, all at the hands of Evil Dale. And is it the principal's secretary that Ray is trying to get information from. I think those surnames correlate. Bob's got a plan and it's not just to stay out of the lodge. There's something proactive that he wants to do. It certainly involves Dougie Jones. Dougie Jones. I'm Dougie Jones. Who the fuck is Dougie Jones? There has to be a transfer for Dale to leave. Bob has to return. It's a one in, one out situation. Like, as if the lodge were a ram-packed nightclub. One in, one out. Uh, but Bob or Evil Dale or whatever we're going to finally call him, Mr. C, has arranged for a patsy to take his place. Uh, Dougie Jones, what is this? Is this a, is this a, a golem, a voodoo? doll, a real person, or is this uh, a, 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 a life created? How long has Dougie Jones been around? How long has he been existing? Who the fuck is Dougie Jones? And when we meet him, he's in a, he's in a development site full of houses in the process being made that is owned by a company called Rancho Rosa that is also the production name of the company that's making Twin Peaks. A man created <laughs> to stand in for Evil Dale, set in a community that's in the process of being created by a company that is also creating the television show that we're watching. Layers upon layers of manufacturing going on surrounding this character of Dougie Jones, whose name just keeps getting repeated over and over and over again. I'm Dougie Jones, I'm Dougie Jones. Like an affirmation that he, <laughs> to continually say it, makes him exist. And until he's reduced down to 
probably the, <laughs> the, 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 the densest possible part of him, the uh, indestructible essence of whatever Dougie Jones is, is now in the red room as a small golden sphere. Who the fuck is Dougie Jones? Was anyone else fucking bowled over when we saw Carl McLaughlin in a third role? Why does Dr. Jacoby need five golden shovels? Sarah Palmer watching that wildlife documentary was heartbreaking in the extreme. It goes to prove that you don't need dialogue to tell a story. Her room, weirdly, with the television screen and the screen reflected and the reflections of the TV all around her, seemed, I, on a level that I'm not going to be able to describe, felt like a complete inversion of the glass box with the cameras pointed inwards at nothing. I don't know how better to describe it. She, whereas that's, that, that seemed like the negative space version of, of what she is, but... My God, you did not need dialogue to read her mind while she was watching that documentary. Heartbreaking stuff and from a shot of one of the promos for a scene with her that we've yet to see, I think her heartbreak understandably is going to continue and be quite, quite fundamental. Oh, but, but Coop has seen the white horse that previously only she'd seen. What does that mean? I don't know. Can we talk about Wally Brando? Can we please talk about Wally Brando? The thing I'm noticing reading the slew of reactions to the episodes that have already been released is that for every person that thinks the show's amazing, there are other people who think it's the most awful piece of shit they've ever seen. Some people really hate Wally Brando. I think it's one of the funniest things I've seen in years. The entire <laughs> the entire length of that protracted <laughs> rambling Marlon Brando in light speech had me in absolute stitches and I know that when I go back to rewatch the scene I'm going to start laughing earlier than that at Robert Forster's reaction when he's told that Wally has come to pay his respects I haven't laughed that long and that hard for so long. Props also to Robert Forster for the genius, infuriation, impatience and just reactions to <laughs> this self-important young punk styling himself after Marlon Brando. And again, some mirroring there. James was, our, it was definitely our James Dean proxy in the first two seasons. And now we've got Wally Brando, who uh, <laughs> who is our Marlon Brando proxy, full of such self-importance that he has come uh, to declare he's paying his respects for uh, Franklin's sick brother, and also to tell his mother and father that he will allow them to convert his bedroom into a study. All the while referencing his journeys crisscrossing America, referencing the Lewis and Clark expedition, which for me brought to mind the secret history of Twin Peaks. Is this vital? Do you have to have read this to one? I don't know. I think so.